So the climate conference uh, last year, the United States promised that they would want to triple their nuclear uh, capacity. Uh, right now, it looks like they're they're shooting for 200 gigawatts, which is still double uh, when we compare that to what there is today. Uh, but right now, what we're seeing is is pretty interesting. Uh, so let's go to the screen cap. Um, what you can see is that the United States is right now basically dipping their toes into the water and they're trying to get a handle of what is possible and what is not possible. Or, or, or basically, uh, what is the potential that is there right now that might be relatively easy to, um, you know, to, 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 to get, get fulfilled, to get realized. So the Department of Energy, they uh, basically um, last week, the, the September 9th, they they uh, they published this um, survey, uh, as, as you will, and there they say, could the nation's nuclear power plant sites support new reactor builds? And this is not really a new idea because uh, when I interviewed at Dr. Alexander Canera, for instance, which was in 2017 or even in 2016, I can't really recall. Um, he basically told me that whenever you, you know, you close a power plant, wh whatever it is, whether it is a nuclear power plant or a coal fire power plant or, or gas fire power plant, and these days maybe even a wind farm or a solar solar farm. Um, what you have is you have a, a really valuable asset just by having a site uh, that is designated for power production and that has uh, access to the electricity grid and perhaps even access to cooling water and maybe some other things that might be necessary if you want to build a power plant at that site. You know, think about parking lots or... Uh, buildings for people to work in an office. Uh, there's plenty of things that you could need. Now, this thing here, what the Office of Nuclear Energy just published, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, so they did a quick survey of all the all the power plants in the United States, and their findings are pretty interesting. Uh, what you see is that if you look at the United States, um, I believe that these are all in the Rocky Mountains, right? These, these, these uh, western, um, these, 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 these western states here. Uh, what, what is that? Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. They have these are are, are plains states, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. So what you see here is you see, uh, and this is a weird. <laughs> this is a weird. Uh, a weird map. Well, it's not that weird because it shows, uh, you know, states where there are nuclear power plants with operational nuclear power plants that also have space for new reactors. So the first thing that 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 is pretty obvious is that California is not uh, is not green which would imply that there is no space for new nuclear power, new nuclear reactors at the Abel Canyon, which is a operational nuclear power plant. Also, if you, there's also a blue, uh, light bluish uh, color used, uh, which would implicate, which would imply that Songs, the San Onofre nuclear generating station is also off the table. So it's probably, uh, you, you can probably see that they don't think that these sites are uh, suitable for uh, new nuclear reactors. Uh, I disagree with that idea, obviously, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so then they say, okay, you can leverage existing sites. So here you can see sites with plant reactors or license applications. Again, green uh, sites with planned additional reactors in Washington, all, all the way up west, northwest. Uh, that, that's the probably the, the, the Bill Gates venture, uh, Terra Power. Then you have Arizona. Um, oh, wait a second. Washington could also be the Hermes reactor, I believe, because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the Hermes reactor is also going to be uh, built in at the Hanford site, if I'm not, not mistaken, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure. 
in any case, um, so we are going to do a, a, a deeper dive into this because there's also some strange things here. They talk about 600 megawatt reactors that they that they that they would, you know, they, they said okay, there might be play, a space for two or four 600 megawatt reactors, but at this moment nobody is offering a 600 megawatt reactor, so that's strange. So that's if if we go to the to the document itself. So this is the document, the evaluation of nuclear power plant and coal power plant sites for new nuclear capacity. Pretty interesting. And then you go down. I'm not going through the entire thing, uh, but you what you can see here. This is the coal power power plant, the, the coal power power plant, coal power plant evaluation. Uh, then they say potential 600 megawatt units, uh, potential. 1,000 megawatt units and potential 1,117 megawatt units, which are obviously AB 1,000s. Uh, and then here, this is at uh, coal, uh, you know, trying to overhaul the coal power plant or, you know, uh, building a nuclear power plant right next to a coal-fired power plant. And, and over here, you can see the summary of the nuclear power plant uh, results. Again, 600 megawatt units. Uh, I, I don't know who is offering 600 megawatt units or whether the United States is cooking up something secret that nobody's aware of, but uh, there are no 600 megawatt units available as far as I can tell. If you and, and the trouble is, if you look at what is currently on offer with these small modular reactors, these, you know, the biggest are 300 megawatts, the X300 and the AP300, um, talking about light water reactor technology, um, then probably this number will go down because a, a 300 megawatt reactor building isn't necessarily much smaller than a 600 megawatt reactor building. Don't get me wrong, I think 300 megawatt reactors are pretty cool and I really want us to build a lot of them. But if you want to go for efficiency, then obviously there is, you know, if you want to do a, a, a space availability, a space availability versus uh, space needed uh, optimization, then, then perhaps 600 or maybe even seven or 800 might be more optimal than having, for instance, a 1200 megawatt or an 1100 megawatt reactor. So, so that's something that I, I I'm really interested in seeing seeing done. Uh, obviously, some people would would say, okay, you just build the biggest thing that you can build, you know, build the six sixteen hundred fifty megawatt uh, EPR, and then be done with it. But I don't know if that's the smartest way to go forward. Now, I made my own map right here. So what you see here is um, I've basically placed a marker at every existing nuclear power plant in the United States, but I also placed a marker where there were nuclear power plants but are no longer, those are the black ones. The blue ones are the operational nuclear power plants that are in operation today, then there's yellow ones, those are uh, shut down and in decommissioning process. And then the purple ones, they are very interesting, uh, those are sites sometimes not even sites but um those are you know envisioned nuclear power plants nuclear power plants that people were talking about but were never realized so there's 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 a couple of them one of one of them is in florida for instance um very interesting developments um and you can also see there's even a a, a decommissioned nuclear power plant in puerto rico it's also part of the United States, so that's why I highlighted it. Now I've got the entire list over here, as you can see the list on the on the left hand side. And I'm going to go through a couple of them. So North Anna, right? If we if we zoom into North Anna, this is very interesting. Uh, so what you get to see is they have one or no, so, sorry, they have two pressurized water reactors. They have plenty of water. Now, as you can see, if you see these jaggedy lines on a on a satellite picture, that implies that there is a dam somewhere. So this is this is a reservoir, um, and, and and 
let's see if we can find a dam quickly. It's probably here. Yeah, this is the dam, right? And then you have the North Anna River. Now, I don't know whether this, this, this lake was created specifically for the nuclear power station or whether the nuclear power station was placed at, at this site because of the reservoir that was created. But the interesting bit here is that at this particular site, the United States or a power company uh, asked for a combined operation operations license, a call, CUL, uh, for an ESBWR from GE Itachi. Now they they were through in the end. Uh, I believe that it was 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 actually an issue. We're, we're going to see that later. But the interesting thing is, if you look at this this situation, I mean, there, there is ample room. Um, it's not like they. It would be impossible to actually build a new nuclear power plant here. What you can also clearly see is these power lines, because they have to cut the trees underneath them. So you can see the power lines running all over uh, the place. Now, if we go to Callaway, Callaway Nuclear Energy Station, uh, which is in uh, Missouri, uh, what you see is one pressurized water reactor and it was also a call for one other nuclear power plant and if we go to Comanche for instance right Comanche Peak I believe that it is yeah Comanche Peak there you see two pressurized water reactors this is a pretty interesting site here you can see the turbines um, not being in an enclosed space but just out in the open which is something just put it in an enclosed space. It's always better, I believe. Uh, but you can see there's there's plenty of space here and probably water as well. There's 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 another dam, uh, as you can see. Um, so and if we go to all these all these purple ones, Fermi here, for instance, uh, they did. They you can see. I mean, it's pretty pretty uh, clear that there is there is there's a way to to build extra nuclear power plants there. By the way, this is pretty interesting because this is probably a boiling water reactor. You can recognize the boiling water reactors by the square buildings. Most of them don't have, um, you know, these, these round containment buildings. And this is pretty interesting. This looks like some kind of a cooling facility. Um, let's go back. So I highlighted a couple of other uh, nuclear power plants that I wanted to talk about. So there's Turkey Point. Turkey Point is pretty interesting um, because there's a gas plant right next to it. And I don't know what they're doing here. But here you have another two uh, pressurized water reactors. Now this is right at the Atlantic, right? So it's due south from, from Miami. But I, I believe that, you know, these sites here, that this could be very interesting. Then we have VC Summer, something that I wanted to show you because VC Summer, uh, the Virgil C. Virgil C. Summer uh, nuclear power plant originally was a single pressurized water reactor, and they started the construction of two AP one thousands at that same location. But this was a total uh, a total failure. Um, I, I do hope that they that they will. Uh, finish these one day the question is whether they can be finished i don't know but it's quite interesting because you can you can look into the containment building and you see here these two things which probably would house the uh, the steam generators i believe and the nuclear reactor would be somewhere in the middle here there would be a spent nuclear fuel pool somewhere over here and, and, and what's interesting about these things, I mean, right now you, you get a, a unique exploded view, basically. Uh, there would be a circular crane in the top here once it's finished. And that circular crane would be very, it would be a very powerful crane that would be able to lift the lid off the reactor and, and do some heavy lifting. Because still, once these things are finished, uh, you need to do some kind of uh, maintenance on it. You still have to move some heavy stuff around. So there, usually there's like a heavy crane in there. 
But what's what's not so nice is that I mean, all this stuff is out in the open right now. It's 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 uh, it's open to the elements, and 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 the question is whether they can uh, actually uh, get up and go again with this whole project. I don't know if it will, if it will ever do that, but you know, it it is what it is. Now Vogel, I made purple. Uh, the reason why I made it purple was because it's you know it's still on the call. Uh, page so here you see the original nuclear power plant it's quite small actually right when you see the footprint uh, so two units uh, two cooling towers over here this here is the generating building and over here you have the switch yard that's the access to the grid that you need if you want to you know uh, sell electricity to paying customers on the grid and over here yeah you the, the first to AP 1000s completed in the United States. Now, I think that they are a pretty sleek design. Uh, not that big, actually. Um, I can take the ruler here and just take a take a measurement. It's like 200 meters long. And let's let's see how wide it is. I mean, it's wide, it's far. It's maybe 100 meters, 110 meters wide. It's nothing. And if you look at the entire uh, block surface, for two ap 1000s let, let, let's say that, it, that it's something like this right without the cooling stuff i mean it's 35 hectares sounds like a lot but it's not it's it, it's really a tiny footprint so then we get uh then we go to palisades which is something that i wanted to show i'm still uh, still having the ruler uh palisades was shut down pressurized water reactor again as you can see and um they Holtec, Holtec bought it to decommission it, but in the end they 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 basically thought, well, you know, this this is a much much too valuable asset to decommission. Um, let's let's keep using it. So so they basically said, okay, you know what, we're going to reuse it. Uh, and 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 then there's some some in, in, interesting stuff here, Indian Point. One of the biggest climate crimes ever committed in New York. As you can see, this nuclear power plant is 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 what it's it's like twenty or thirty kilometers due north from New York. Oh, it's it's almost well, Yonkers is there, so it's it's like thirty kilometers away from New York. It sits on the Hudson River. I've seen it with my own eyes, and it's a tiny nuclear power plant. It's absolutely tiny. So if you look at just just this 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 size here it's it's like three four hundred four hundred meters it's nothing four hundred meters in a power plant that 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 can feed power to an entire city of you know millions it's crazy so they replace this with uh gas plants they're 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 over here somewhere I don't know exactly where they are and then finally I wanted to show you so so these are all decommissioned ones so songs is a very very uh, sad story. Um, this one could have been saved. I mean, this is the San Onofre nuclear generating station perched between a highway and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. It's just going to be decommissioned and that's it. I don't believe that the switch yard is even attached anymore. I mean, you can still see, you can still see cables running here, but I don't know if it's if it's functional or not, or whether it's just meant to keep some some power here in order to operate some machinery that they need to to decommission this plant. But you can see, I believe that the the turbine building used to be here uh, and here, and they are gone completely. The turbine building is gone. So there's no way of restarting that ever again, I believe. Um, would be better to build new two new reactors there, if you ask me. Uh, but that's something that, you know, the elites from Los Angeles probably don't like. So Zion, that's something that I wanted to show you. I once, uh, I, I once um, flew over this thing here. Now you can see... The spent nuclear fuel is still there, but the reactors, uh, everything, uh, the nuclear power plant, in essence, simply was demolished. They completely wiped it off the face of the earth. The only thing that's still here is the substation, as you can see. 
and maybe that's still in use. And if it's still in use, then then perhaps new reactors can be realized there. Uh, why not? Uh, that would certainly reinvigorate this whole area over here. Um, because nuclear power plants bring better jobs, support local communities. Uh, and that's, that's very interesting. And then we get to these black ones. These black ones are very sad. <laughs> they, they are all completely demolished, most of them. Main Yankee uh, is gone. The only thing that is still there is the, the spent nuclear fuel. Uh, something here like Elk River. Uh, gone. The, the nuclear power plant is completely gone. And, and, and the further we get down, the smaller these things get. Like Pathfinder over here. The, that thing is still there. It was only like a couple of megawatts. Was it wasn't that big, and then you have Valacitos. Those are actually still in use, but they're no longer in use as nuclear power reactors. But they are in use as uh, this is a training facility for people who want to uh, to do uh, something with nuclear. So as you can see, if we zoom out, we go all the way back out, and we check uh, the United States, then we can see that there's plenty of nuclear power facilities in the United States, uh, I believe it's 54 at this moment. It, you have uh, 96 gigawatts of uh, clean air power. So let's go to the next uh, picture. Let's see, because I have a couple of them. Uh, let's, let's, let's get this uh, to, the, to, the, to last. Oh, there's still a muscle building expert in there. <laughs> So let's see here, you can see the list of all the nuclear reactors that are operational today, plus all the reactors that were shut down permanently and some even decommissioned, completely destroyed actually. Uh, so this is, this is this you can find on the World Nuclear Association webpage, very interesting. So 94 uh, reactors operational. In 2023, they produced 19% of all the electricity in the United States. So they are an amazing asset, an amazing asset. Now, if you want to know uh, what licenses were issued, uh, suspended, withdrawn, uh, that you can find on the website of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, it's available for anyone. Uh, you can you can just Google it and and find it. And, and this is basically where I got all these uh, things from the purple ones. The purple ones were all um, sourced from this page. As you can see, a lot of them were withdrawn, and you can also see the, most of these requests are from you know two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. Uh, which shows that there was a real appetite for nuclear uh, at that moment, but unfortunately, most of these um, most of these calls uh, never got built. I mean, the only two that got built, the only two uh, calls which were combined uh, license applications for Vogel Unit Three and Four and Virgil C Summer Units Two and Three. Uh, that's those are the only ones where construction started. Uh, and and but but unfortunately the uh, unfortunately two of them never got finished, which is really sad, really sad. Uh, as you can see, most of these applications were for AP one thousands. There's also uh, the U.S. Uh, advanced power reactor. I don't know what that is. I have to look into that as well. But you can also see some uh, some economically simplified boiling water reactors. There were those were pretty large. Pretty large boiling water reactors. There's also an US EPR in there, so the, the United States European pressurized reactor. And that's it basically. That's it basically. There's the, there was also an application for the Aurora by Oaklow, but I believe that Oaklow right now is 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 switching to a liquid metal fast breeder reactor. Uh, basically uh, trying to um, recreate a, a commercially viable EBR2. Uh, so, so this is all very interesting. Uh, I really suggest if you want to know more about this that you that you that you uh, that you look into this. And then finally, what I wanted to show you is what is the, what would the impact be in 2023 if we actually had these nuclear power plants? 
right? So this is a nice summary. You can find it on the Energy Information Administration. Uh, here they say, okay, that nuclear did 18.6%, and uh, I believe that here they say 19%, so <laughs> they rounded it up. Um, so what did I do with this information? So these are the 2023 figures. So what I did was I collated fossil fuels. I basically said, okay, fossil fuels is one, one rubric. And you could see 60.3% over here. That was all uh, generated electricity uh, by fossil fuels, coal and gas predominantly. Then you got nuclear as the second largest source for electricity, 18.56, Then you get wind with 10%, hydro with 5%. 7, 5.8%, solar with almost 4%, biomass and geothermal. So here you can see fossil fuels dominating the electricity grid. Um, now the question is, what do we need to do in order to make sure that we get rid of these fossil fuels? Now some countries have uh, are confused. They think that they need to shut down nuclear first in order to make that happen. And then they, they need to expand renewables so that they can... Uh, make up for the loss in nuclear, and then try to start pushing out fossil fuels. But that's obviously uh, not in the cards. But we know, do know that there was 24 gigawatts worth of coals, right? So so all these, these, these coals over here, uh, let's see these coals. Uh, I believe that all of this together, if you, if you count that up, that's 24 gigawatts. So what if we would have built those 24 gigawatts? Now, what you can see is that we would push roughly 5% of fossil fuels out of, uh, out, out of production because nuclear would take 23.19% of the, um, of the um, yeah, th th this is not correct. This should be 24. Uh, uh, out of commission. Now, if we go to 96 gigawatts, which is the total uh, total um, the maximum potential that they have if they would build those 600 megawatt reactors that don't exist, then we would already see uh, nuclear pushing a lot of, of, of fossil fuels out of use. Uh, almost 19%, 18%. Uh, less fossil fuels. But if you then take everything together, so you, you take the, 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 the 24, the 96 gigawatts, and then uh, the other stuff that they say that they could build if you, if you replace the coal-fired power plants, then nuclear would take up 70% of the total production in the United States in 2023 figures, right? This is counterfactual. I'm just trying to envision how much better it could have been if we had 361 gigawatts of nuclear instead of 59, which we have right now. And then fossil fuels would account for less than 10% of the total electricity production in the United States. And I think that that would be a sizable win if we could do that. Now I made another uh, sheet. These are the same uh, results that you saw earlier, but I, I basically, what you see here is the 2023 figures. And then you can see how much of the fossil fuel you can eventually push out of the nest. If you would actually do this, if you would actually say, okay, we think that nuclear should be our primary source of electricity. Now, it's this is a very interesting exercise that the, the Office of Nuclear Energy did, and I think that it is very important for a government to think about how much nuclear they can actually deploy. What is the low-hanging fruit, so to say? Um, because that can inform leaders to make, you know, to make the right decision, to say, okay, listen, if we really want to get rid of, 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 of fossil fuels, then adding a sizable portion, a sizable chunk of nuclear power to the grid, that will help us uh, get to where we need to be. 
So that's basically uh, what I wanted to tell you. Um, I think that nuclear is the bee's knees of electricity production. Uh, there is a lot of potential there. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can see right now there's there's a Patreon link uh, in, in, in the screen. There's also uh, links to other videos if you want to watch anything else that I make. Hopefully you find it informative, perhaps even fun, I don't know. Uh, in any case, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.